So I thought I'd share with you guys three different types of claw foot walking leg mechanics. Um, they're all going to be using this very inexpensive uh, dual drive DC motor gearbox that you can buy literally almost anywhere, you know. And uh, the RPMs on these are actually a little bit too high. So in this particular, all three of these designs, I'm using a gear reduction, a smaller gear on either side. This fits into that piece like that. But the main difference between these three, this one, let's start with type one. This is the simplest. It's a single crank. You have your gear reduction, your pin, and then you have a pivot point and a single crank. So when this one walks, the uh, body will not only be rising and lowering, but tipping forward and backward as it walks. So it's not as efficient because you're using energy for three different movements when the main goal is to actually just make something walk. And then in this design, you have dual cranks, top and bottom. So now you, you've gotten rid of the tipping function, but you still have a raising and lowering as it walks function. So this is a little bit more efficient. And then finally, you have the most efficient all of them. For example, if you wanted to make a solar-powered robot that walks, I would go with this design. It uses a cam down here and a ledge that the cam rides on. Basically, you know, a motor-driven wheel is going to be your most efficient thing. Well, this is a walking device that basically is a motor-driven wheel in that a leg on these two... Uh, arm points if you will rides on that cam halfway and then the other side takes over on the other half and that lifts so it's rolling as if it was rolling on the floor on this leverage point until that leg lifts up so it's a very uh, the body never lifts or lowers or tips it simply walks forward even though the legs are lifting so it makes it more efficient now, it's probably the easiest way to make these seem a little more clear would be just to run them. Uh, granted, this is a very short little area here. And for this particular demonstration, since there's no body on these, I just went ahead and, and, and glued on a little double, a triple A battery pack that has a built-in switch on the back. Obviously, if you were gonna design a body for your robot project, you would build the battery holder into the body. But for these demonstrations, it's just on the back. This is a very simple, walking thing that I'm sure you've seen many times and again being geared down like that it makes it uh, a little more usable that knocked the battery cover off but uh, let's see if I can hold it and keep my fingers out of the way so you can see what's going on so here you can see that there's basically one crank and a pivot point and you're 180 out degrees out of the two and here's your gear reduction from the motor all the parts for 3D printing this I'll have up on Thingiverse called Type 1, Type 2, and Type 3. And basically there would be one leg file which would print twice. The, the motor, small motor gear which you'd print. The large uh, crank gear if you will you'd print that goes on either side. And one motor frame. So there's not that many parts. And to screw all of these together for example, to hold the large gears on that are pivot pins, I'm using a 3 by 12 millimeter uh, tapping screw. It's nothing special. You could probably substitute a, a 440 screw or something like that if you had one laying around. And then uh, the actual, that's the one that was in there. Then the one that I'm using to uh, pin the small gear onto the motor, although it's not really necessary because the gears really snap on quite tight. But I went ahead and ran a screw in there and a screw out here with a small washer to hold it on there. In that case, they're just, um, I'm just using a Phillips head number two by five sixteenths length. These aren't critical. You can find junk screws from old toys from the dollar store or from Walmart or something from China and uh, make them work. I also put a, uh, a flat washer behind this gear before it goes right to the frame. And it's just a, a, a number four flat washer you can buy almost anywhere. And the washer that's on here, again, number four. They're not hard to find. They're very common. So that's your simple type one, which when it walks, the body lifts and tips. 
And here's your Type 2 design, which will get rid of the tipping and just keep the lifting. So now you have two crank points, top and bottom on either side. Again, still 180 out. And what that's going to allow you to do, well here, let's just, again, well, i got to find the right place to put my hand so I'm not in the way of anything. So you can see how that uh, is going to work. And it's a very good walker because it doesn't waste energy with the tipping action. But it is still wasting energy lifting and lowering. So this brings you to the most efficient design. The single cam down here, but you have your two crank points with a cam to do the lifting. And this will keep, if there was a body hooked on here, the body won't, won't, be, won't move except so for the walking, of course. Let me hold it here again. Let's see if we can again find a place that's safe for my fingers. Now holding in the air, you're not seeing the true action because it, it needs gravity to hold that down. But there you can see what's going on. See the body would be steady. So all energy that's being expelled by the motor it's pretty much just being used to make it walk forward. And of course, on all these designs, if you wanted to make the uh, make the robot walk backwards, you would just reverse your two, your two motor wiring so you can have forward and backward on the designs and they work fine. I've used this, I used to call this a square stepping design, but I've also used it in, uh, in boats where I wanted the robot to actually row the boat. And I used to call them robots. But that gave you a very square rowing action where it would bring the the oar, the paddle, you know, straight out, straight down, straight back, straight up. A nice, very clean, square stroking. It really gave a nice uh, rowing action to the whole toy. But um, like I say, all all the files for all three of these designs up in Thingiverse, they all go together pretty much the same. Um, the motor housing that the motor snaps into is the same on Type 1. Uh, no, is the same on Type 2 and Type 3. Type 1 is different because it doesn't have the upper gear. It has a pivot point, so that's in a slightly different place. But other than that, the uh, small motor drive gears are the same for each one. The cam, large cam gears on Type 1 and Type 2 are the same file. Um, and this one has different cam gears and different legs, obviously. So, there you go. Have fun.